and welcome back to Behind the Numbers. I'm Dave Bookbinder. I'm a senior director at CFGI. Appreciate you tuning in and listening to this program where we dig deeper to understand what really matters most in business. Today, I'm super excited to uh, introduce a guest who's going to bring us a big dose of motivation, inspiration, and I'm pleased to be sitting next to Dr. James Smith Jr., who's the president and CEO of James Smith Jr. International. But I'm going to call you Dr. Jim. Call me Dr. Jim. Dr. Jim, welcome to Behind the Numbers. It is a pleasure. What an opportunity. Thank you so much for creating this for me. I'm looking forward to talking. Good. Well, why don't you tell the audience a little about who you are and uh, what you do, and then we'll jump in. I, uh, I help people get out of their own way. I help people live big, not just think big. I, I help people challenge their self-created barriers. And I do it through the books I've written. I do it through my motivational speaking and leadership consulting. I do it through coaching, and I do it nationally and internationally. I've been to 30 plus countries and 45 states, and I've of late been doing it through my blog and through Zoom, right. webcasts and webinars, because for the most part, yeah. we have to maintain our physical, not social, everyone says social distance, it's physical distance, <laughs> but that's what I've been doing of late. Great. Awesome. Well, excited to talk about leadership. Um, it's a topic that is really relevant now, always is, frankly, because in any organization, uh, profitability comes back to how leadership operates and what that really constitutes. Yeah. But one of the words that we hear a lot recently is authenticity. Yeah. Um, what does authenticity really mean and how do leaders exhibit that? It's, 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 it's a topic or a construct that I thought I knew what it meant. Mm -hmm. And when I did my, my dissertation and my research, I went in thinking that authenticity, being true to oneself, was either, either authentic or inauthentic. It was a case of either or. Through my research, I hypothesized or determined that it's a matter of more or less, that there are degrees of authenticity, not you're either authentic or inauthentic. And I believe it, it speaks to self-knowledge, knowing oneself, and self-regulation, how one comports oneself. And there are times to be more authentic, and there are times to be less authentic, considering the situation and what's happening within. The workplace or what's happening with clients and customers. It's not being inauthentic or being uh, misguided or not telling the truth, but sometimes as a leader, there are varying degrees of how much truth you should give given a situation. Right. Because sometimes you're still collecting data and you're not ready to give the team incomplete information. You're not being inauthentic but depending on the situation, determining how much I should share. Yeah, I hear young leaders talk about the idea of, I'm, I'm trying to be more authentic. <laughs> and I get the sense that you either you are or you aren't. Uh, what, what's an example of, of authenticity? Is there something that comes to mind? Yeah, I'll give, just give you one of late, considering the circumstances we're dealing with these days. Because of the uh, civil unrest and social unrest, People are asking more questions, they're taking more risks, they're seeking to understand before they are understood. Uh, but there are comments that people make from time to time that in the past, Dave, I, I would not have said anything, I would have let it go. For instance, Dr. Jim, you know, when I see you, I don't see color. In years gone by, I would say, okay. But internally, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. I would rather you say, Dr. Jim, I don't let color play a role on my interactions with you. I don't play, let it play a role in my treatment. But I don't want you to say I don't see color. Because I see it. I see it with you. I want you to be color conscious, not color blind. And by you saying you don't see color, I'm proud of my color. It plays a pretty cool role in who I am and what I do and how I show up, the flavor I bring. Right. I don't want you not to see it, but I don't want you to let it play a role in how we interact. And I used to be less authentic 
because I would ignore it. I don't ignore it anymore. That's a teachable moment. Gotcha. And I'm more authentic about that situation and how it lands on me. Good stuff. I want to talk a little bit now about uncertainty. That's the, the one thing that I think everybody who's watching and listening has been dealing with for quite some time now. Um, and how would you advise folks to, dare I say, embrace the uncertainty? And you, when we were talking before going on the program, you like to talk about your COVID blessings, uh, the cool stuff that has happened for you yeah. during these very uncertain times. So mm -hmm. how would you advise people to kind of embrace the uncertainty, if you will? Number one, uncouple fear from uncertainty. They're different. Being afraid is different from being uncertain. You don't know. You're afraid. They're two different entities. Number two, when you're uncertain, stop forecasting failure. Because you're moving from uncertainty to this isn't going to work. It's not going to be good. I'm going to fail. I'm not going to be able to pivot, rebound. It's over. No. You just don't know how this is going to end. Right. Being vulnerable says, I'm not sure how this is going to end, but I'm going to do it anyway. Fear, I'm afraid. I'm apprehensive. Now I have to make the decision, do I move forward or not? And for me, I always say, feel the fear and move in. And my favorite acronym for fear, F-E-A-R, is face everything and rise. Face everything and rise. Ah, it's not going to work. They're not going to like me. Tough audience. This is going to be a tough presentation. You've already made it tough. You struck out before you got up to the plate. Right. I can't count on you. Just say, this is new. This is a new audience. For many of us in the speaking industry, as well as leaders, you're now leading from a distance. You're in front of that computer, that laptop, having to motivate your audience from afar. Oh, I can't do it. I can't touch them. I can't feel it. It's not going to be a good meeting. Well, it's not. This camera, this laptop, this smartphone is now the way I motivate. And you have to be able to do that, not well, let's just hang in here in the meantime. I'll, I'll do my best now and we'll see what happens. Okay, good luck with that. <laughs> right, right. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's okay to be uncertain. It's okay to be allergic to ambiguity because a lot of us want things to be black and white. We're not living there right now. No, we don't usually, even in, quote, normal times. Yeah, but that's how some people believe and that's what they're waiting for. And like I told you all the time, Dave, I help people lose weight. W-A-I-T. Stop waiting for this to happen. Stop waiting on them. Stop waiting for things to go back to the way they used to be. Yeah. We may not ever see that again. Going forward, it might be a hybrid of the way it was, the way it is. And we have to pivot. We have to adjust. And I'm not sure how it's going to work out, but I'm all in. Yeah, pushing past fear is, is a common thread, whether people acknowledge it or not. I think you highlighted it really neatly, the, the difference between the uncertainty and the fear. But yeah. underpinning a lot of decisions that leaders make, or even just individuals in their day-to-day -day lives, uh, is this fear factor, whether they're acknowledging it or not. So when you talk about this motivation, yeah. um, and leaders now motivating from afar, is motivation something that has to be from without, or is motivation an, an inside job that people can look in the mirror and basically you know, motivate themselves, which is it? I believe that it's an inside job. What's the theory about bringing a, leading a horse to water but you can't make him or her drink? I believe that I have the key. Now, I want you to keep knocking to entice, to create curiosity but I unlock whether I embrace it or not. I believe it's internal. Yes, I do motivational speakers, but I have some audiences or some individuals while I'm speaking, they're like this. Mm -hmm. It could be because they don't trust their leader, their boss. It could be because they have a newborn at home and they're not getting any sleep. They've had to relocate. They have all this stuff on their mind and I'm pumping them up and I'm, 
get fired up. Yes, we can do this. Yes. <laughs> but no. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, because in that moment, they're choosing not. It's like being a DJ and you're playing all those records and jamming and someone is sitting down. And you're playing every nice new song in there. Their feet could hurt, their corns could hurt, their back could hurt, but they're choosing whether to move in or not. One of my favorite quotes is, in life, when we're young, we're young, we look a lot like our parents. But when we get older, we look a lot like our choices. So what do we choose? When people in organizations say, Jim, my manager, my leader doesn't empower me, he or she can't. They can create an empowering environment, but it's up to you to take advantage of that environment. Become invaluable. Become resourceful given the situation you're dealing with. And for me, that meant after 14 years in corporate, starting my own business. I'm a maverick. Nice. I'm going to question you for why did we do this? Why did we do No. We're wait. We're a meritocracy. No, you're not. It's not happening. I'm getting in early. I'm staying late. I'm bringing it. And it's still not happening for me. I have a choice. And when I left my last corporation, my last full-time job, I was a vice president. And I still wasn't fulfilled. There was more out there. Mm -hmm. Time to me to make the choice. Nice. It's an and both, but I believe first and foremost, it's internal. Dr. Jim, how can folks who are watching and they want to get in contact with you and get fired up with you, how can they reach you? Absolutely. Social media is there, Dr. James Smith Jr., as well as website, www.drjamesmithjr.com. Check me out. Check him I out. talk to you. We, <laughs> Let's make it happen. <laughs> we have probably 90 seconds to go in this segment, so wow. I'm going to hold your feet to the fire and, and pull your microphone Boom. off if you go over it. Here we go. But, uh, in, the, in the next 90 seconds, I want to hit on presentation skills because yes. when you talk about this remote environment that we're all in, leaders have to figure out better ways to communicate. Any presentation skill tips and tricks uh, that you might offer the audience right now in this situation? Sure. Three in less than 90 seconds. Oh. Number one, remember to present to express, not impress. Express, not impress. Number two. As you're sharing your information and you move into storytelling, remember R squared, R squared. That's relive as you retell the story. Relive and retell. And last, the fish model, the fish model, F-I-S-H. The I in the word fish stands for I, the listener, I, the person on the other end of the Zoom call, I, the person on the other end of the presentation. I need to F, feel your message, S, see your message, H, hear your message. If you are presenting to express, not impress, if you are reliving and retelling stories, and if you're using the fish model, you're going to elevate your level of presentation skills and audience engagement. There you go, in 90 seconds or less. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to hit the pause button right here. You watching and listening, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after these quick commercial words. gourmet cook or just want to eat like one visit Rostelli Market Fresh your home for the freshest locally sourced ingredients to please everyone who loves great food our organic meats quality seafood and free range poultry are cut fresh to order chefs create culinary inspired prep foods made fresh every day which pair nicely with our vast selection of fine wines and spirits choose from handmade pastas artisan cheeses organic produce and grocery items all from the finest purveyors Rostelli Market Fresh from our family to yours dogs aren't broken. They've simply experienced more life. If they were human, we would call them wise. 
They would be the ones with tales to tell and stories to write, the ones dealt a bad hand who responded with courage. Do not pity a shelter dog, adopt one. Burlington County College. Welcome back to Behind the Numbers. I'm Dave Bookbinder, and today we're getting a dose of motivation and inspiration from Dr. James Smith, Jr., who I'm proud to call Dr. Jim. Dr. Jim. So, Dr. Jim, we covered a lot in the first segment, but I want to start the second segment with something that you alluded to in your introduction. Sure. Uh, you had mentioned that you'd written several books. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about those books, what inspired you, and then, of course, where they can find them. Sure. The, the first one I wrote in 01, then it was republished in 06, and then again in 08. It's called From Average to Awesome, Lessons for Living an Extraordinary Life. And for me, the book is semi-autobiographical. I, I tell the story about being raised, single parent family, and mom essentially laying the foundation, being the GPS for where I should go. Attending K through 12, never missing a day of school. Uh, sitting in the front row, raising your hand, becoming allergic to mediocrity, knowing that your, your, your area code, your credit score, your income doesn't define who you are. You define who you are. You move from average to awesome. That was the first one that mm -hmm. got me started. The second one was more on my craft, and that is presenting and engaging the audience. It was called Crash and Learn, 600 and plus ways to fire up and engage an audience. My first corporate jobs were in training and development. That's where I, I learned my love for speaking, for being up in front of people. So I wrote a book on it. And people still use it today. That was 07, 08, and a lot of my clients and colleagues tell me they still use it, it's their Bible. And the last one, the No Excuse Guide to Success, no matter what your boss or life throws at you, was nominated for NAACP Image Award. And it's all about accountability, responsibility, no blame, no victim. It's not anyone else's fault. It's up to you. Own your choices. Ownership. Yeah. Own your choices. And now it's a great time for that because we're blaming a pandemic. We're blaming politicians. We're blaming lawyers. We're blaming elected officials. We're blaming everybody but take charge. Yeah. Take charge. The latest one, I'm a contributing author to a book that's called A Collective Breath. It's about being black in America today in the hope for a better tomorrow and change. And I'm one of a number of authors that contributed a chapter to that book, and I'm super excited. It'll be out in October. Nice. And where can folks find these books and the new one? Website. They can go to the Dr. James website, they can go to Amazon, either of those two places, and they can go to www.bmctalks.com. Okay. That's Bridget McGowan, who is the contributing, she's the one who put us all, put it, brought us all together. It was her idea, her brainchild. She said in early June, after George Floyd was murdered, she realized she, needs to, she needed to do something else, something substantial, something that will last. And she got a bunch of authors together to contribute. That's great. To the chapter. I, I want to give you an opportunity to talk about something now that I know that's near and dear to your heart, um, and that's autism awareness. Yeah, it is near and dear. Um, the quote suggests that we don't see things as they are, we see them as we are. And I, I met my bonus son when he was 11 years old, and that's when autism came into my life. It was new, wasn't sure. I was probably more conservative in parenting because this was new for me. But then in 06, my uh, biological son was born. And for the first 14, 15 months, he did what children do. They poop, they cry, they pee, they eat, they laugh, they crawl, they walk, they talk. But sometime after 15, 16 months, the talking stopped. And after a series of tests, going to the pediatrician, going to CHOP Children's Hospital, he was diagnosed on the spectrum. 
So my biological son, my bonus son, my two sons are both on the spectrum. And although we understand them, they're nonverbal. And to be a speaker with offspring that don't communicate the same way. They communicate. Trust me, I know what they want. But it's a different level of communication. And I now, as a result, spend time contributing to autism research. I'm on the board of Variety, the children's uh, charity, um, helping out with children with special children, adults with special needs. But it, it's front seat for me now. It's, they blessed me with their difference. We take things for granted so many times. Parents will tell their children, shut up, be quiet. You'll never hear us say that. We yeah. want more. We want more. So they blessed me. They both are my heroes, and they're teaching me to be a better individual, a better father, a better man. Well, thanks for sharing mm -hmm. with the audience. I know that was important to you. And good opportunity for you to tell folks how they can contact you or if they want to learn more about autism awareness, what can they do? I'd say the best, the best course of action will be just reach out to us, www.drjamesmithjrjr.com. And there you can find resources, information, or be led to additional resources. It's huge. It's one of those things we take for granted until it actually lands on our doorstep. And it's in my front seat of my life, my, my life car. Great. Can we uh, shift the dialogue back to some of the business topics? Sure, now? sure, cool. sure. In the first segment, you made a really good distinction between fear and uncertainty. I want to ask you to create a distinction now because it's something that you'd mentioned to me briefly in passing. Yeah. And that is, right now and every day in life, the only constant we face is change. change. What's the difference between what you describe as change versus transition? Mm, thank you, thank you. Change is situational. Tra transition is psychological. The change is the actual boom, now this is there. But because this is now there, doesn't mean psychologically I'm there too. Mentally and emotionally, I might still be there. So what organizations and leaders don't do, they make the change and expect people to be there with them. There's the loss, there's the letting go, there is the, the melancholy moments. This change was forced. I like this. This works for me. And it's gonna take me a while to get to there. Actually, William Bridges in his book, Making Transitions, talks about the first step after letting go and loss is the neutral zone. And when you're in the neutral zone, it's like, okay, I've had to move. I have one foot in the past and one foot in the future. I'm still not there, but it's still part of my transition. Then finally, I'm into the new opportunity, but it takes a while. Imagine someone who's gotten divorced, especially the person who did not want the divorce. They're not going to go from being divorced to now being single mingle and out there doing things. They're going to, wow, that hurts. Memories. What am I going to do now? Who can I turn to? He or she won't be there to fix things. He or she won't. They're ah. Now, okay, it's been a few months. It's been a few years. And then finally, this is my new life. And I believe organizations and leaders, when they go through change, they force the new normal on people. Let's focus on results. We're not focusing on people. Yeah. The transition helps with that. Yeah. Um, we have about five minutes to go in this segment. I, there's a lot I want to cover, so I'm going to yes. ask you to, to, okay. to hit these in, in sound bites. Boom, if you boom, will. boom. When you talk about change, one of the things um, that leaders have to deal with is changing tools, changing ways to solve problems in a constantly changing environment. Um, and I, I know you've got some advice for leaders in that regard as well. Stop using old approaches, an old mindset, old tools for new challenges. The challenges are different. The golf course has changed. It's been remodeled and you're still using the old three, five, seven, nine clubs you used back in the day when they were wood. Things are changing. Adapt 
pivot, change, it's not going to work any longer. It doesn't fit. Yeah. So let's segue that into the future of leadership. Um, yeah. I'm going to ask you to look into your crystal ball. And here you can take a little bit more time. You hit that one out of the park with brevity. <laughs> so you can go a little deeper here. Let's talk about the future of leadership, um, not only for those who are currently in seat, but for, but for the folks watching and listening who yeah. are the, the leaders of tomorrow. What are the skills, the mindset that, that they need to develop to be successful as leaders in the future? Yeah. The future of leadership, we're talking about more diversity in the workplace. We're talking about perhaps more distance in the workplace with organizations not having addresses because people are working from home. We're talking about more technology. We're talking about artificial intelligence. We're talking about cybersecurity. We're talking about people who are more inclined to speak up. We're talking about millennials. We're talking about people who are wondering, do I wear my mask or not? It's different. So as a result, we need to be, as leaders, more vulnerable, more mission-driven, more open to change, more open to disruption. We have to understand diversity, equity, and inclusion. We have to know about those micro inequities and those invisible forces that limit one's extension to the top of the ladder. We have to, be, we have to embrace uncertainty. We have to be better communicators. We have to be authentic communicators. We have to be selfless leaders. I'm reminded of yeah. Simon Sinek books, uh, Leaders Eat Last. Yeah, that was a great read, <laughs> great message. It's not about me, it's about we. And the old model was the dictator, the driver, get it done. Yeah, you're still gonna get it, get it done. But it's a combination of focusing on results and focusing on people and I believe you're an expert on that because of your book ROI talking about individuals not investment so we need to do that going forward yeah. leaders definitely need to do that and part of that's also about being coachable too right mm. being coachable and being able to coach knowing I like to say, knowing what's in your employee's front seat. Because in the car of life, we have a front seat, a back seat, and a trunk. The trunk is things we pull out when there's an emergency. The back seat, yeah, we have it with us, but we don't necessarily rely on it. Front seat, that's who I am, what I love, what's important to me. It could be my race, my religion, my family, my approach to life, my education. It's getting that front seat information in the way you get that front seat information as a leader is to give yours first yeah because you're building trust and if you're vulnerable and you share what's important to you now old school the windows would have come down new school the windows go down but they put the windows down they being the employees unlock the car come on in the front seat with them that's what leaders need to focus on in the future i believe yeah, it's really about connection and rapport and building that trust, which builds then um, the allegiance to the organization that triggers the engagement, which triggers the discretionary effort, which, boom, impacts your valuation. That's what I preach about all the time. So Return thanks on for setting me up. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's probably a great place to stop. They're telling me we're out of time, unfortunately. So it was a great wow. conversation. I know, right? It, it just goes so fast. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on Behind the Numbers today, Dr. Jim. Been a boom. pleasure. Uh, We've been chatting with Dr. James Smith Jr. from Dr. James Smith Jr. International, lovingly known as Dr. Jim, and you now know how to reach out and connect with him. Please do. Uh, I know he's doing uh, webinars and Zoom calls and so forth while we're not able to do any live events, but hopefully that'll resume again and you'll be Absolutely. back in front of people uh, in person. Uh, thank you for watching and listening. Whatever platform you're watching and listening on, please do hit the subscribe button so you can stay in contact with us and know what we're up to. And until next time, take care, everybody.